one school was very enthusiastic the principal there he said that there is this parent teacher meeting happening lot of parents will be coming can you build a demo can you build a good app um and he said i asked okay where is the parent teacher meeting it's like two days later <laughs> and <laughs> like what to do now and but we were in that hustle so okay, okay we have to get out there so i think for for 36 hours we just coded uh, we were just co- like we slept in two days we slept for five or six hours and three of us we were just coding let's start with who are you ha i mean that's a better question and like maybe then we'll go from there what do you do and all that like thoda background ठीक है या आई थिंक सो फर्स्टली तो थोड़ा ये हु आर यू टाइप का क्वेश्चन इज आई ट्राई टू नॉट आंसर इट जस्ट बाई सेंग दिस इज वॉट आई डू बिकॉज मतलब ऑल ऑफ अस आर मोर देन वॉट वी डू बट या आई वर्क एज अ लीड एम एल इंजीनियर इन हाइपर वर्ज तो वहाँ पे वी आर बिल्डिंग अ लीगल ई आई प्रोडक्ट एंड एसेंशली फॉर मैनेजिंग कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फॉर स्मॉल एंड मीडियम स्केल बिजनेस सो आई लीड ए आई फॉर दैट एंड we have a non profit division called hyperverd academy where we sort of invest the some of the profits that we earn um as a contribution back to the world mm-hmm. so uh, hyperverd academy helps students from like low income backgrounds and helps them become like a full stack engineer we also have more pathways like a devops engineer data scientist but primarily it has been full stack engineer for now so and waha pe we have launched like an ai tutor for them uh, called sensei uh, sense ai mm-hmm. uh, and i'm leading ai for that as well okay nice and some background maybe on like uh education and ha bani journey of school yeah yeah so i graduated i am from kolkata uh, i was born and brought up there uh, i did my bachelor's from iit guwahati and uh, i did it in electronics and communication but i was never interested in the topic got into programming in my first year like towards the end of my first year and uh, did android development for a few years then went into machine learning and uh, have been in machine like continued that till the end of my bachelor's went to work in this non profit called vadwani ai after mm-hmm. that where we were working on ai for social good um, and uh, from then in 2020 i moved to another non profit called avanti fellows mm-hmm. uh, avanti fellows is like a 11 year old non profit that uh, helps students from low income backgrounds get into uh, very good colleges uh, specifically in je like clearing je need mm-hmm. um, right and also during the pandemic we started working with government schools to help them um, sort of teach online during the pandemic and now um, working with them to help them conduct at home learning interventions uh, yes. after school programs as mm-hmm. well uh, so i was there till 2022 and uh, in june of 2022 till march of 2023 i was like a consultant tech lead for uh, a startup named division circle mm-hmm. it's like a linkedin for retirees uh, where the goal is to yeah. uh, provide a platform for retirees to find meaningful things to do after retirement um, so i was sort of help help them build their first initial version of their tech platform build the initial engineering team why iit why is very simple because my mom told me to <laughs> and uh, uh, i didn't even know what iit is while i was preparing for the most part i just knew that i have to write this exam because my mom has told me to and that's uh, that's pretty much it i got to know during the mid of my class 12th that okay this is for getting into some iit college thing um so and, and why ec uh it again a very simple decision uh, you just in that time while applying you don't have a lot of exposure mere paas to mujhe zyada pata nahi tha ki kya hota hai matlab computer science mein it was clear that kuch computer wagera mein karte hain and i was not like a tech savvy person back then mai bas maths karta tha matlab i was good at math that was it but i was not like a tech techie uh 
बिफोर कॉलेज सम पीपल आर राइट बट आई वॉज नॉट इट वॉज नॉट क्लियर टू मी कि हाँ कंप्यूटर्स ही करना है या इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स करना है इट वॉज नॉट क्लियर नथिंग वॉज क्लियर आई हैड नो एक्सपोजर टू वॉट ईच ऑफ दीज फील्ड मीन आई जस्ट न्यू आई लाइक मैथ दैट वॉज इट बट हाँ द मेन डिसीजन फॉर ई सी वॉज सिंपली सॉर्ट बाई द प्लेसमेंट नंबर्स फॉर डिफरेंट कॉलेजेस एंड इट वॉज ऑलवेज सी एस ऑन द टॉप ई सी सेकेंड एंड दैट वॉज माई प्रेफरेंस ऑर्डर एंड गोहाटी के लिए इट वॉज ऑल्सो वेरी सिमिलर यू जस्ट यू हैव लाइक अ टिपिकल रैन किंग राइट ऑफ ऑल द कॉलेजेस सो गोहाटी वॉज ऑल दो लाइक नंबर सेवन बाई द पॉइंट by that during that time but i placed it in my sixth preference because one of my uh, se- seniors from my school and very close friend my childhood friend uh, was already there so um i want it was some sense of familiarity um, while i could have also i think i also placed kharagpur way lower in the priority because uh, i am from kolkata as i said right and i didn't want to be near home at the time i just didn't want the option ki someone can say ki ghar aa jao weekend mein mere ko nahi aana tha matlab to mujhe thoda dur rehna tha i was in that space at the time so i wanted to be a little far from home but also it would be good to have some familiarity there which is why i chose um, like i had a kohati at a higher preference than some other colleges uh, did you like ec no <laughs> why uh, i think i was also not like a very diligent student uh, इतना मोटिवेशन नहीं था मतलब इट वाज नॉट कि सब्जेक्ट जो पढ़ रहा हूं उसमें बहुत मजा आ रहा है कोई एंड आई वाज आई गॉट इनटू प्रोग्रामिंग बाय द एंड ऑफ माय फर्स्ट ईयर तो उसके बाद प्रोग्रामिंग में इतना मजा आ रहा था कि इट वाज अ क्लियर डिफरेंस राइट कि इसमें मजा आ रहा है मैं दिन भर कर सकता हूँ ये और ये जो दूसरा सब्जेक्ट है आई एम जस्ट ग्रेडिंग रीडिंग वॉट Uh, is being shown or whatever is being taught i was also not like a great student back then um, but also it didn't capture my interest ki mereko kuch dikh raha hai ki mereko din bhar yahi karte rehna hai i was not drawn towards it plus i had something jahan pe mereko din bhar karte rehne ka man kar raha tha um, so i didn't like that part of ec maybe until my second year end of my second year uh, uske baad I got some motivation because I came into a relationship and अब उस समय था कि अब जॉब वॉब चाहिए अच्छा सिक्योर करना है तो जी पी अच्छा जी पी ए अच्छा होना चाहिए एंड तब एकदम फुल मोटिवेशन आ गया था कि अब तो पढ़ना है एंड थैंकफुली उस समय आई थिंक इट वॉज माई फिफ्थ सेमेस्टर कि मैथ कोर्सेज काफ़ी थे बहुत मैथ हैवी थे एंड देन दैट वॉज अमेजिंग मैथ आई लाइक तो फिर देन आई स्टार्टेड getting like nine pointer and all that, but क्योंकि interest आने लग गया था and कुछ subject जिसमें नहीं भी interest था there was enough intrinsic motivation to move past that barrier and learn it. तो बहुत चीजों का obviously it's assumed कि first second year में you have understood that right, but I did not. I had just mugged up. I used to study one night before or like max one week before and just make it such that exam में decent like seven eight type आ जाए बस एंड देन आई वुड रिलीज ऑल द नॉलेज राइट कि गेट लॉस्ट आई हैव नो यूज फॉर यू बट वेन आई वॉज वेन आई केम टू माई फिफ्थ और सिक्स सेमेस्टर आई नीडेड दैट बेस्ट नॉलेज अगेन सो आई हैव टू एक्चुअली स्पेंड टाइम कवरिंग माई प्रीवियस कोर्सेज एज वेल वेर आई एक्चुअली अंडरस्टूड कि क्या हो रहा है बियॉन्ड जस्ट मगिंग अप टू पास माई एग्जाम्स इट वॉज इंटेंस एंड हैवी बट आई एन्जॉयड इट देन when math came and then i was more interested in the actual like when i was learning myself instead of relying on maybe someone else teaching me i was learning by myself and then i enjoyed it more uh, so i feel that if i were to go back and if i started from like day one from a more curious mindset uh, i might have enjoyed it but at least abhi jo mera experience raha tha usme i didn't enjoy it a lot more uh, I didn't enjoy it a lot, but I enjoyed the math courses and obviously the machine learning based courses. I enjoyed them. Was GPA also a motivation of uh, this uh, fueled uh, motivation to do better in academics in the third year? 
yeah matlab the the quite the deeper reason is that gpa was a motivation and gpa was the motivation because you needed a uh, good gpa to get good companies and i wanted to get to a good company because i had a girlfriend which <laughs> so i wanted to marry and so i wanted to settle with uh, uh, that's a good reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but but okay i mean i mean even placements apart uh, gpa also helps with let's say higher education and stuff like that right like yes. it's it it does so th- this is a myth that gpa it doesn't matter yeah 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 matlab i from what i have seen it really matters and especially for someone who wants to go and study abroad it is a big factor and i have also discussed it with other people as to why people consider it a big factor right and it's a very logical reason so uh, one could have a profile where maybe they have a low gpa but they have a lot of projects they have like maybe achieved something phenomenal or done something amazing they might have become uh, they have, might have won some global competition right and in that case they will have an exception for the gpa because you have an equivalent something to compensate for it but uh, if you look at someone's profile right and their gpa is also low and they have not even done something that stands out it shows it's a marker that you are not maybe as disciplined or as motivated or as consistent and it is only practical that if a lab or a, even a company is looking for world class talent and um, if there are so many people applying and there are people who have great gpa they have great projects right then for them it is only logical that they will not pick your application right so i think if you have something that you are fundamentally driven by and motivated to do and that doesn't align with your gpa uh, or your uh, uh, program then you need to make sure that you sort of really bomb like you really hit some jackpot in whatever you are interested in even if that co- comes at the cost of the gpa but you should have something that compensates for that loss in gpa so either you have like great proof of work or let's say i mean if you want to pursue something else you do great in that correct or if you have chosen a program you choose to do uh, like well academically in in that especially from a higher studies perspective but even for industry i think now it's becoming a critical factor yeah like i would say proof of work as you said is the most important thing even when i am evaluating resumes i my first look does go to the gpa and if the gpa is high then um the bar or the rest of the cv is a little lower especially if their program is aligned like suppose if it's a computer science student right and if their gpa is high then it shows that you are likely good at programming because a computer science curriculum is quite comprehensive it covers not just like a competitive pro- coding thing it covers operating systems networking very fundamental concepts computer architecture uh, writing your own compiler things like that right so if you have been like say really good at that and really good at all your particular subjects it's great and it puts a lower bar on the rest of the cv like the internships that you might have done right on the side projects because i know that for someone to get like a 9.5 9 GPA or 9.5 GPA it takes a lot of time lot of time in rereading revision doing your assignments and so then you don't have as much time for side projects but again that does not mean that if someone's GPA is 7 i don't look at the rest of the cv it's just that when i look at someone with a gpa of 7 in my head there's a higher threshold for them to cross uh, in their in the rest of their cv do they have good projects do they have good internships have they shown effort and commitment um so i look for that so yeah it's never like okay that guy cv is 7 or 6 and so i will not look at the rest of the cv i am just looking for there's a lot of onus on the rest of the cv now to compensate for this uh because my own gpa was not even 8 right so i know but i know ki in my cv there's a lot more to compensate for it so i am always confident and if someone doesn't want me uh, that is what my attitude was ki even after all of this if someone doesn't want me just for the gpa i don't want to be there it's okay yeah um so now let's say you you focused on high gpa so you started becoming more serious uh, to get a job mm-hmm. now 
typical jobs are in competitive programming based jobs you know like computer science jobs correct why did you not go for that and you also tried some other things in college why did you not go for those things why i mean how did you settle for ai so during my fourth semester i did a startup um, before that after my fifth semester i did did an internship at a startup sorry after my third semester i did an inter- internship at a startup a uh, very small place just four or five of us right and i was doing android development at the time um and they gave me a lot of ownership and it was clear that people were in it no one was doing it as a transaction that i will work for 8 hours you give me this amount of money and then i am done most of the people were not even drawing any salary right they were in it um and once i spent one month there it was a phase shift that this is the kind of environment i like where people are in it uh, versus in a lot of pl- places where people work it is like a transaction right ki i am just here i'll just do this thing and i'll come out that's it i am not that person i have to be completely invested in whatever i am doing um and being part of that one month showed me that this a startup environment is where i can get this and uh, so once i came back we had this microsoft code fundu competition that happens in various colleges and it also happens in our college um so there they wanted us to like you know build apps come up with some ideas and so a couple of friends and i um we came up with the idea of building like sort of building a single platform for teachers students and parents to come together uh because at the time there was no ed tech like a lot uh it was mostly all analog in the analog world right handwritten stuff and uh, we could see ki uh, a lot of time of the teachers gets wasted uh in sort of where people are yeah right the student the teacher has to go into the diary of every child and write this is the homework this is what so 50 students how much time is being wasted then i know that many people would sort of bump their school and go somewhere else and especially when students are young it's not safe right and as a parent they are not even aware that these things are happening um and so some kind of attendance mechanism now all this will sound very wrong that hey you are tracking us and all that and at the time i was thinking more from the perspective of this is a problem and we should solve it uh, to have homeworks being sent in the app itself for the teachers and parents to communicate in the app itself for attendance to be marked in the app itself so that teachers are spending more time on teaching uh, what they want to do and what they are best at as well um, so we built some app in a couple of days or so and this is in college you did all this in college so you was a yeah, yeah. you were a young ed, ed tech pioneer before it became uh, mainstream <laughs> i don't want to attach a lot of these like social status uh, labels yeah. huh. uh, no i get your point it's just uh, i don't want to boost my ego by saying that uh, just that i want i was passionate about it and um, we gave it a shot we it was amazing again right to work with my friends in two days we have built an app and it's working somewhat and uh, it felt exciting and so we decided in my sixth semester we will sorry in my fourth semester we will completely go all in and we will build a startup and so there were four of us and we would spend a lot of our time in the city so we would just ignore our uh, college and all we would just go to the city every morning we had listed down a bunch of uh, schools that we wanted to go to and uh, based on whether they are private or government uh, if they are big or small and we wanted to just talk to as many people as possible right so teachers students uh, parents so we would just go to the schools and stand outside ki when parents will come we will talk to the parents we would try to go inside talk to the principal and here you realize things like having a tag of an iit really helps mm-hmm. because people then value you that was my first time of using the tag outside college right yes. and i could see how much respect that garners from people so uh, it's well learned right i mean i would say people say iit se kuch nahi hota etc but i would say i have benefited personally a lot even yeah. yeah so even you have it's not like we want to use it to get ahead but it's well learned like it is like it is there's a clear brand to it there's a clear trust to it and there is no point denying it right there is an implicit trust that people get when they hear you are from iit abhi 
there's no point denying it. Obviously, it's not fair in the sense that uh, it does not mean that only people from IITs are good. There are many people from IITs whom you shouldn't be trusting. And there are many people who are not from IITs that you should be completely trusting. Like, for example, uh, for example, one problem that people from IITs and, and I'm including me as well in this, right, is a need for hyper growth. <laughs> Growth is happening or not happening. What will happen? Right? So, we find it hard to maybe dedicate ourselves to something. For example, I think Zerodha has publicly said, right? That yeah, they don't hide yeah. from IITs. Uh, and I can understand why, right? Because uh, there is a constant, like they are asking, and by the way, I mean also me, like, right? where is my growth in this, right? And the company can say that we, we will provide you the best environment. There are many meaningful problems to solve. You be with us in this journey and you will grow. But that answer maybe does not suffice. Yeah. Uh, right? So the point being that uh, it's a brand. It's obviously not an, uh, encompassing everything. It has its own biases. Uh, in yeah. my case, it worked. Uh, so let's talk by, back about the uh, you were talking to parents and children out there for building your first startup. So yes. uh, you took a customer first approach. That's like pretty much uh, the uh, it, so what were the in insights there? Like you were talking every day, right? So yeah. what were the sharp insights that you got from there? Yeah. So I think uh, what you highlighted upon why we went and spoke to them was because when we started, I was like, I will first read why startups fail. Okay. So I like ignored why startups succeed. I kept reading why are startups failing, and a, a common theme there was founders conflict. Uh, then number two was building something that no one wants. And as an engineer, our bias is to go and build, right? That is what I do best. But I am not good at talking to people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what we are trained for, uh, in some way, and. So that was a shift. Ki, okay, we have to go and talk to people. So we did it. We stopped building anything. We were just going and talking to people. Um, and it was clear that principals saw the problem. They wanted it. Mm -hmm. Parents saw the problem. Uh, but the students didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you want to track my attendance. <laughs> you want to tell my parents what homework have I got. So they were not very enthusiastic about the idea. And I think one mistake that we made was we didn't talk to teachers enough. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is we spoke to them. There was an, One school was very enthusiastic, the principal there. He said that there is this parent-teacher meeting happening. Lot of parents will be coming. Can you build a demo? Can you build a good app? Um, and he said, I asked, okay, when is the parent-teacher meeting? He's like, two days later. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> like what to do now and but we were in that hustle so okay, okay we have to get out there so I think for, for 36 hours we just coded uh, we were just co like we slept in two days we slept for five or six hours and three of us we were just coding um, and by the end of it we had some version out uh, it was okay it was showable we could demo it to parents and we took it out there again parents were super happy children like students were not uh, <laughs> principal was very happy and so we piloted in that school uh, and so the next next year that began we were there we were an app and you have to do all these very random things because now these students are not going to come and sign up and all that so we had to make their their accounts and the way we distributed it was we made our printout of the username password for every student and we went to the when we went to every class and we said okay uh, hari prakash you know tumhara credentials like okay. every class we were going and we were distributing credentials mm -hmm. uh, as a printout and after the end of the school we would say to the parents aapke bachche ko ek app ka credential mila hai usme aapko sab dikhega uska homework uska attendance and as i am saying this the student is getting stressed <laughs> right so these were the kind of random things that we were doing um but then we realized the reason why it was not working was the teacher look ka kaam Actually, it's not a company. Because 
हम लोग को क्या लगा था कि अटेंडेंस उन लोग हमारे आप में करेंगे तो दे विल नॉट हैव टू डू फिजिकली बट ओनली दैट विल ओनली हैपन व्हेन द स्कूल हैज कंप्लीटली अडॉप्टेड दिस राइट एंड ऑल द टीचर्स ऑल द पेरेंट्स ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स आर यूजिंग दिस जब तक वो अडॉप्शन और वो लेवल पे ट्रस्ट नहीं आया है दे हैव टू स्टिल कीप डूइंग वॉट दे यूज टू डू सो वॉट दिस एंड अप बींग वॉज अडिशनल वर्क कि दे हैव टू डू वॉट एवर दे आर ऑलरेडी डूइंग plus they have to do this now so i was working in topper.com like 3 uh, 4 years ago so they had this product i was not a part of that product team but uh, they were building topper os okay. uh, so this is something similar mm-hmm. maybe a little more comprehensive like you have video uh, lectures inside as well uh, so this was a os for the school operating system for the school again similar things uh, similar problems i think uh, the way they got through it till some extent was coming from the very top down you know like if the board of the school or the principal enforces this across i think that's when this really starts going so that was our learning from there i think you had something similar yeah yeah absolutely uh, right. so uh, till how long did you try out and you figured that uh, yeah, you would uh, or like Uh, how long did you continue with this so all of this was uh, in the 6th semester as in the 4th semester itself mm-hmm. uh, going and talking to schools making the demos doing the pilot having these learnings going so a semester is 4 months. months so basically you started with uh, the idea in the hackathon mm-hmm. and then you uh, went and talked to all this uh, customers or uh, parents schools out there mm-hmm. built it and uh, also did a pilot in 4 months yes oh, that's very nice nice yeah. yeah and uske beech mein also we have, we went and you know pitched to some b b school competitions mm-hmm. sorry b plan competitions and i was very afraid of speaking in front of people uh, very very afraid so my friend who is also my roommate a flatmate now right he coached me he was already good at it but i was sort of the person leading i don't like to use it because all of us were leading but i was the one maybe presenting mostly our work okay. so he coached me uh, on how to speak well how to appear confident what were the mistakes i was making and all that so uh, during those four months there were a lot of personal learnings as well uh, personal growth that happened as well but obviously my C- gpa completely tanked right because uh, <laughs> there were courses uh, Uh, whose professor I hadn't even seen. Like I would see the prof in the exam. Uh, they wouldn't even know you are in my class, right? Because there are all these assignments and homeworks. I didn't do do anything. I was just focused on. Like we were all just focused on the startup. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think this all started with uh, why AI and why not everything else. Yes, yes. So um, although after this experience we. I took the decision that I cannot continue this anymore because uh, same reason I got into that relationship and suddenly for me stability became a super high priority and I could see that if I continue down this path then um, I might not even succeed here plus my GPA is also going to get tanked um, so I chose the decision of being on the safer side and i said that i cannot continue this anymore mm-hmm. and i completely went to the academic side but obviously those four months were my best four months right uh, because i could so so i i was not a very confident person um but in those four months i saw myself uh, doing things that were way beyond my comfort zone and seeing that people were actually finding value they wanted us to come solve their problems and uh, they were happy with what we were doing and uh, i could see that okay, there's so much more potential in me um right so i rose uh, so i had a lot of confidence during that period and uh, so i really loved those four months and i knew that this is something that i probably want to do sometime again for now i want stability mm-hmm. so after the year, the year later i went to internet qualcom uh, stability right uh, uh but what do you think would have happened if you have taken that bet that whatever happens i'll just continue building this do you think if- I mean, given the landscape, do you think would it have succeeded if you have would have taken that bet? Um, it's very hard to say, man. There's so much luck involved. Yeah. Uh, and but I do think that there are. I know many people who have persisted through the years, 
with whatever they were doing right and they found a way to still make it work success is a very relative and sort of moving target you never yeah. even know when you have succeeded but uh, they did make a lot out of it just because they persevered and sometimes i have regretted that maybe i should have persevered and i might have been able to do something good uh, but that's a call I took at the time. And so that's fine. Next in time you did at Qualcomm. Yes. How was it different from the one you did at the startup? I dreaded it. <laughs> I hated it. I hated it every day. Um, because when I was there, by the time I had gotten into machine learning, mm -hmm. uh, and it was purely because of the hype. Us people uh, think AI is at the hype now. Usame also there was some version of hype people were getting because deep learning was just taking off. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I just learned through the same Andrew NG, Coursera, <laughs> Goji course. Right. Uh, why I really loved it was, as I said, I loved math before JE, so before IIT. Right. And this was a way where we were using, apply, we were applying math to do something real. Yeah. The, some practical use of math. Uh, I found that I was not very interested in all the theoretical math route, uh, abstract. I was not interested there, but I became very interested in seeing math being applied to solve some meaningful problem in the real world. Uh, and that's why I stuck with it. Um, and I started doing open source contributions to scikit-learn. Uh, and through that, I got to learn a lot about how to write good code, how to like uh, build my understanding deeper about machine learning as well. Uh, so let's talk a bit about this open source contribution. Like people yeah. talk a lot about it. So how did you end up and what was your contribution or how did you end up there? Um, it was, I think one of my seniors recommended me. Mm -hmm. He tried doing open source uh, because I also didn't know Python by then. Okay. Because I was Android development, you typically just do in Java, uh, right? So I wanted to learn Python. I wanted to learn machine learning. Both. So he said, this is a good way where you will also learn better Python and you'll get better at machine learning. And so I just looked at scikit-learn and most of these famous open source libraries, they have a contributing guideline for how you can start contributing. Mm -hmm. And the best way, which is already written there, but also has been reinforced over multiple years, is to just get started with very simple issues, right? So many of the times they will mark issues uh, as help wanted or great for new people mm. or documentation. So these kind of issues don't require a lot of technical knowledge, but they help you do the pipelining from actually starting the code base, replicating it locally, making some small, like maybe, you know, you are just fixing a space or you are fixing a typo, but then you fix that and then you make like a pull request back to the original repo and then they will review your code. They will give you some feedback and you work on that feedback. Then that code gets merged or code yeah. or documentation, whatever. But in this process, you get over the barrier of how do I make a contribution? Yeah. You have seen it end to end now. Uh, so I, I I went through a similar journey, but my journey ended at making changes to the documentation. <laughs> like I could never, I mean, I tried to make a major change, but then I got distracted, I would say. One, I mean, a major thing I was not sure of is even which repo should I uh, start pursuing in, you know, because once you go into that core contribution, I think you need to start reading a bit about their internal working. So how did you decide on that? How did you move across that barrier? Um, I think it helped that scikit-learn was a very widely used library and it is a core library, right? Which when I was also learning machine learning at the time, I was continuously using scikit-learn for my experiments. So that's why I was motivated. Ki, hey, I am using this, but I get a chance to improve it. So that's why I didn't go and scout for other libraries, which I know is a challenge because if I think of doing an open source contribution now, I get stuck ki, there are so many amazing libraries. What do I spend time contributing to? Thankfully for during that time, I did not face this dilemma because I didn't know enough, right? I just knew scikit-learn. So I started and it was clear that there is so much to do here. So I just stuck there and the people who were giving feedback, they were all super nice. So I enjoyed it. Like they made me feel comfortable. 
even though there are these are people i don't know these are people who have built this library right who are commenting and giving me feedback for my major minor documentation changes so i felt this is a good opportunity to learn from these people that's why i didn't go looking around for any other repo uh did you get paid no 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 open source contributions are all typically gsoc i think is the program ha correct correct up so i did not apply for gsoc but this was just during my semester so again i did not care about my studies and all so i was just doing machine learning which we were not taught until that point it was i was learning on my own right and doing open source contribution on my own so this was all during the semester itself uh so then the good thing was that i picked up uh, progressively tougher tasks like for example uh, i think i just enjoyed machine learning so much the idea of applied math to real world problem it just hit me a lot so i wanted to go deep into it and uh, um so their issues was i think labeled help wanted uh by these good labels where you could see which ones are tougher which ones are a little bit easier so i think i scouted through different issues and then i picked ki okay i think i also wanted to apply for gsoc yeah so that was the motivation okay. that if i want to apply for gsoc i had read that many people uh, start contributing already with these companies or will be with these organizations and then they have a good chance of getting into gsoc so i had made up my mind at the time i want to get into gsoc so because of that i had an incentive to put in that extra effort mm -hmm. to go through the issues to find what i can practically do so some of them were clearly way above my level uh, but I, also i think because of my startup experience and by then i had also worked with other startups in the campus so i was comfortable with handling very large code bases mm -hmm. still maybe not at the scale of psychic learn but still i was not very intimidated by them i could go there right so uh, i scouted through various issues i found something that uh, seemed like this is doable uh, and the good thing about open source is right you can ask people as well how do you think i i could approach this do you have any suggestions to people also give some recommendations uh, then it takes time to go from the idea of that recommendation to the implementation writing tests getting it actually reviewed going through that cycle of review and getting it merged that's a whole other set of work but people are happy to share their thoughts or ideas for approaches um and um, and their code is reasonably like well documented and well structured yeah, yeah. where you can follow that train of thought it becomes complicated when the code is very messy and the abstractions are not very clear but their documentation was always very good and there was a very consistent api so one could expect ki maybe this will be there this will be there so and there is again no alternative to just ghisna right ghisna padega so uh, this was before your call comment right this yes. itself yes. so after both of these experiences like the qualcom and this open source how did your mindset change about uh, what you wanted to do so uh, i'll tell you what happened that this was in my sixth semester by then qualcom internship was already finalized so i went to qualcom and there i really tried ki people just give me machine learning projects they gave me some kernel optimization and i am like i have no interest in this and they were giving other people who didn't know machine learning machine learning projects which didn't make sense to me right this i have seen with a lot of internship programs that uh, although people get in uh, it's very hard to find that uh, synergy where w what they have been doing and want to do and what the correct uh, uh, the the team wants to do and it, it becomes difficult to get something productive out of it yeah so it's a, it's a, i don't know how to solve it but it, I, there is something i have also seen experienced hmm. so even though that that person is very talented he can actually contribute uh but since the team is constrained with the problem statements it has it becomes difficult for them to move ahead yes. so yeah i mean how did uh, what did you do next like after the internship what was the change in your mindset before that you were like i want to do a job the stability mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. and i think uh, then the best way to get stability is mostly mncs is is my thought yeah, yeah. but how did that change after the internship yeah um 
so i'll just complete the internship part because that has the answer to this okay ki uh, because i i tried a lot to get an mn internship i opened their work, uh, people repository i looked at machine learning whoever is working whoever is was in bangalore i'm like I, can you meet me i want to work with your team i would go to different buildings and try to meet people so that i want to work with you i want to work in machine learning i tried a lot but uh, it was just not happening okay. and then i said fuck it so i was like i was not i will not do the work that is assigned to me uh, so i was not doing my work mm-hmm. i would go to the office i would go to the sleeping room <laughs> and i would go there and do some courses some course or the other it is absolutely wrong kind of a work ethic and i don't promote it but it is what i did back then i was just super uh, pissed ki if they are not going to listen to me i will not listen to them and uh, so i just went to the sleeping room every day and i did whatever course i wanted to do uh, beach mein then they had like a two week uh, hackathon thing hmm. so wahan pe i worked with some people again we then there we used deep learning we built like some model of an automated car parking system which i really enjoyed uh, right but then by that time i had a lot of hatred for corporate obviously it was just one data point hmm. so not the wise decision but i was not obviously wise back then uh, but i was clear ki no corporates but just to like look at the bigger picture qualcomm is actually doing some amazing work which i mean is enabling let's say our mobiles to run correct uh, stuff like that right and maybe they have some amazing ml accelerators also out there so Absolutely. there is good work in ml in qualcomm happening it's exactly. just it didn't match at that exactly uh, when i where i was looking for maybe i don't know if it's a india office thing or it's just my bad luck uh but i got a very bad experience and mm-hmm. i applied it to all corporates that okay. this is what corporates are but i feel with with big corporates the the important thing is you have to get the right team mm-hmm. if you don't get the right team then uh, you won't get uh, the exact work that you want to do exactly. and it's very probable as, he, as sudarshan mentioned right Qualcomm is doing amazing work, so there are teams who are doing that, right? Exactly. But you have to find it. Yeah, that's the big problem there. Yeah. Even if you find it, you will not get it. Huh. Like you might not get it. Might right? not. Because I found those people who I wanted to work with, but still, just logistically, they could not assign me and all that. So it didn't happen. So uh, I realized that I don't matter there, right? Mm. Uh, and in any such big company, you don't matter. but in a small company you do because they are what you have so i became even more uh, clear that i wanted to work in a startup i will not work in a corporate i was super clear by because of that experience i was super clear um so that's when and i knew ki on campus we don't get good startups at all so i had already started applying off campus um and uh, i got an offer before the placements itself i had an offer from fractal analytics uh, so i was very chill in placements i'm like fuck placements i already have an offer but uh, the offer was okayish like it was okay but obviously on campus people were paying more so i was like theek hai i will try but only for the roles that have machine learning i will not look it's not that i didn't do competitive programming i did do interview bit and i was trying to excel there because that's a gateway to those companies even if a company is hiring for an ml role their tests would still include competitive coding so i was i sat in the placements but i only applied for six or seven companies uh although i the options were a lot do you remember which ones uh i think microsoft was one maybe not 6 or 7 maybe 4 or 5 but i just remember microsoft and uh, ola i just remember them um uh, because that's those are the ones this come interview stage tak pahuncha baaki to nahi yaad hai but ha it was a very selective group where i thought ki there's a chance to get into machine learning or they are already giving a machine learning role or a data scientist kind of a role um So then I got an offer from Ola as well, and उसी के साथ साथ मुझे मालूम पड़ा था कि Fractal Analytics दूसरे campuses में जब जा रहे हैं IIT Bombay वगैरह में तो then they are paying almost double of the salary that that my offer had. So I'm like, seriously like that's uh, that's very surprising. Usually across all IITs it's same, but yeah. So this was off campus, right? So mine was off campus. 
सो देन आई स्पोक टू देम एंड देन देवर लाइक ई सी है तो ई सी और ई सी सी एस वालों को हम इतना दे रहे हैं नॉन ई सी ई सी एस वालों को जितना तुमको ऑफर में मिला है वो दे रहे हैं मैं बोला मैं तो ई सी ही हूँ तो बोला अच्छा तो फिर एक और टेस्ट दे दो ठीक है दे देंगे एंड सो आई क्लियर देयर डाटा एज वेल सो आई गॉट एन ऑफर फ्रॉम ओला आई गॉट एन ऑफर फ्रॉम फ्रैक्टल एनालिटिक्स एंड आई वॉज ऑल्सो इंटरव्यूइंग फॉर अ ताइवान स्टार्टअप कंप्यूटर विजन बेस्ड स्टार्टअप और तो बेसिकली वो दो तीन दिन के स्पैन में ही मेरे को तीन ऑफर आ गए थे एक कैंपस से बाकी दोनों और ऑफ कैंपस से तो आई वॉज रिसेंटली आई वॉज क्वाइट हैप्पी कि चलो अभी सेफ्टी नेट है क्योंकि यू आर कमिंग फ्राम अ मिडिल क्लास बैकग्राउंड वेयर पेरेंट्स हैव नॉट सीन अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ मनी राइट एंड मनी हैज बीन अ सोर्स ऑफ मेजर कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इवन तो अभी थिंग्स आर क्वाइट स्टेबल स्टिल इट इज अ सोर्स ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट राइट सो बैक बैक टेन ऑल्सो देर सो मच प्रेशर राइट लाइक कि ये बेटा आई आई टी गया है यही घर को मतलब करेगा उजाला बनाएगा तो देर वॉज सो मच प्रेशर यू नो टू गेट अ गुड जॉब सो आई फेल डेफिनेटली रिलीव कि चलो आई हैव समथिंग क्वाइट डिसेंट नाउ बट आई वुड स्टिल से विथ दैट प्रेशर यू स्टिल टुक दैट रिस्क ऑफ बिकॉज आई रिमेंबर ए आई वॉज नॉट अ फील्ड वेयर वी हैड मैनी कंपनीज और इवन मैनी प्लेसमेंट्स है मोस्टली इट वॉज या तो एनालिटिक्स या यू गो टू कॉम्पिटेटिव कोडिंग एंड देन सम अदर फ्यू रोल्स राइट सो यू टुक दैट रिस्क दैट इज फॉर श्योर रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वट एवर प्रेशर यू हैड एक्स्ट्रा प्रेशर था राइट कि वो भी करना है और ऐसा भी जगह जा रहे हैं जहाँ टिपिकली वी डोंट गेट प्लेस्ड और वी डोंट गेट ऑफर्स सो I felt very relieved after that, uh, but also I needed it because वो Qualcomm का experience showed me कि my personality is such that if I don't like something, I cannot do it. Basically वो personality का positive और negative दोनों होता है ना कि कुछ पसंद है तो एकदम घुस जाते हैं but negative ये है कि कुछ पसंद नहीं है तो मैं नहीं कर सकता like नहीं कर सकता So I I realized that about me कि यार money and all is fine but हर दिन ना उठ के खुद को मतलब पागल हो रहा हूँ मैं तो this is not worth it right so I'm like at least let's try and thankfully there were some companies still right at given क्योंकि इतने लोग apply नहीं कर रहे off campus people like you get noticed now applying off campus is more common yeah at that time it was not so it was easier to get recognized uh, or seen uh, comparatively um, उसके बाद लेकिन फिर भी था कि मेरे को ठीक है ये सब कंपनी भी ठीक है बट फिर भी ये स्टार्टअप नहीं है मतलब उस सेंस में मतलब दे आर ऑल थोड़ा थोड़ा सा स्टेबिलाइज्ड कंपनीज है बट आई वाज आई वाज हैप्पी बट अभी आई एम लाइक अभी है तो और कुछ बेटर भी देखते हैं नाउ ड्यूरिंग माय सेवेंथ सेमेस्टर के एंड में या एथ सेमेस्टर के स्टार्टिंग में हाइपर uh, के जो सी है उनका कॉल आया मेरे को रैंडमली विघ्नेश नाम है उनका okay. uh, उनका कॉल आया एंड Uh, he found me somewhere on LinkedIn, and he was like, "Would you like That's to interest with us?" I was like, "Acha, देखो पता मेरी ये company कौन है? इनको कहाँ से मिल गया मेरा?" मैं बोला कि आप थोड़ा बताओ अपने बारे में आप क्या कर रहे हो? मतलब जब देखो भी जाना मेरा reverse interview ना मुझे बस जानना था कि like ये कोई randomly call कर रहा है आपको आपको मालूम तो पढ़ना था. How tables turn when you have three uh, offer letters with you? <laughs> People call you, bro. Please intern with us. <laughs> It's not like कि वो कोई पब्लिक इन्फॉर्मेशन था हाँ बट आई मीन दैट कॉन्फिडेंस यू हैव ना अदरवाइज यू वुड बी लाइक क्या प्लीज गिव मी वॉट एवर करेक्ट बट नाउ दैट यू हैव दैट कॉन्फिडेंस की टेल मी वॉट डू यू डू इफ दिस इनर्जी As a student, it's very difficult to ask those questions, I especially when you don't have that safety net. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think so that's the part. Uh, I mean, that's that's what it brings to the table. Like. Absolutely, but I cannot tell you, yar, how lucky I am that he found me because I don't know. Maybe I might have encountered them through some other route, but I am just incredibly lucky that he found me somehow, and. Um, so he said would you like to intern with us um ab mera to eighth semester khatam hone wala tha so i'm like kab karu fir internship uh bole okay you come after the eighth semester is over after you graduate mm. and they looked very interesting and he was so kind and sweet and uh, uh what they what they were doing seemed very interesting as well so i was like yeah okay so i interned after my eighth semester as well before joining uh so i was supposed to join fractal I had decided कि fractal नहीं हाँ I was deciding between fract to or to बाहर वाला Taiwan तो मैंने मना कर दिया था what um the salary was not that great um 
and ha uh, that was a big factor and they were not willing to increase it a lot okay. versus the based on the living conditions in taiwan that starts that salary would have just been okay, okay. versus i was getting way more in uh, fractal and uh, ola ab uh, fractal maybe there there was a uh, cure.ai uh, naam ka ek company hai uh, which become super famous but th- that time it was a part of fractal only it came out of fractal itself so okay. to i was trying to get into cure uh, because meko baki wo dusra business mein itna na- naturally interest nahi aa raha tha jitna meko cure mein aa raha tha because there was this inkling of wanting to do some ai for social good right so cure was doing ai for uh, radiology um for different kinds of diseases right uh, chest x ray and what not so it was very appealing to me um so i was trying to get ki ya to cure ho jaye ya to fir ola hai hi um but fir um this was ha huh, but fir february mein wadwani ai got launched uh non it's a non profit jo main bata raha tha ki i was in wadwani ai it's a non profit with the goal of doing ai for social good Okay. and modi had organized had launched it okay um, he was at the inauguration okay. and it was started by these two billionaire brothers called ramesh wadwani and sunil wadwani they had invested a lot of money uh, for the first 10 years they had committed a particular sum of money uh, and the goal was very clear ai social good so this seemed like the perfect alignment of all stars right non profit ai social good uh, it just seemed right and when i looked at all the people who were starting who were leading it uh, so our ceo is the one who started microsoft research okay. bangalore okay um, and then there were other people from stanford and uh, all very good reputed places right and it looked like a very all star kind of a team and it felt like okay if i can get in here then that would be amazing and so i messaged the ceo ki hey this is my cv i am interested can i interview mm-hmm. and he said okay I, we will get back to you he replied on linkedin i uh, it had been a while i didn't get any reply um but then he did reply uh, once ki this person will be reaching out to you and then my interview first interview i think was taken um by a, first interview went well it was mostly aligning around what am i looking for and i said i will do anything <laughs> whatever you say i will do <laughs> that is what my attitude was always so <laughs> yeah as long as ai ai uh, is there i'll do it bola kuch bhi kar lunga aapko software karana hai wo bhi kar lunga i just want to be in this team okay i just want to be in that environment i will do whatever right uh, so then i think they were happy with that and fir jo mera next round tha was taken by professor subhashish chaudhary he is it bombay's director okay <laughs> now okay but at that time he was not a director he was still a very senior prof but not a director mm-hmm. and he was working with wadwani as like a consultant advisor uh, so he took my interview wahan pe ek do question i had bombed so i was very aaya nahi tha kuch reply uske baad interview ke baad i was like i have messed this up shit why didn't i know that one concept or uh, something like that but fir after a while they did reply back ki you have cleared this round they would like to call you in person and this was jab semester khatam ho gaya tha so okay. semester khatam ho gaya hai hyperverge mein internship karna hai uh may se and uh, july ya kuch se job chalu karna hai lot of decisions to make in a short time <laughs> it was <laughs> but like july ha aisa full jam pack tha ki july august se job chalu karna hai may se july tak internship hai aur april mein to college khatam hi hua hai and to the my interview got scheduled right before i went to hyperwood so it was like guwahati se main ghar aa gaya tha ghar se fir i am going to mumbai to interview for wadhani interview ke baad i went to bangalore so to start my internship uh, तो मेरी मम्मी वॉज लाइक बेटा क्या कर रहे हो ये क्या मुंबई जाके फिर ये वो बट आई वॉज सुपर पैशनेट अबाउट वाधवानी एंड सो आई वेंट देयर एंड दे ट्रीटेड मी सो वेल यार मतलब आई कैन नॉट डिस्क्राइब एंड पीपल वर अगेन सो काइंड सुपर स्मार्ट एंड द कॉन्वर्सेशन फॉर अराउंड द थिंग्स दैट आई रियली केयर्ड अबाउट कि कैसे हम ये टेक्नोलॉजी ए आई में जो चीज़ें चल रहा है हाउ कैन यू यूज इट टू सॉल्व द हार्डेस्ट प्रॉब्लम्स दैट वी आर फेसिंग राइट एंड द हार्डेस्ट प्रॉब्लम इज नॉट टू लाइक मे बी जनरेट मोर रेवेन्यू थ्रू एड्स एंड ऑल दैट विच मोस्ट पीपल लाइक 
वो कोट है ना कि इट्स स्मार्टेस्ट पीपल इन माय जनरेशन आई फोकसिंग हार्डेस्ट प्रॉब्लम एंड दीज आर दोशल प्रॉब्लम तो बहुत मजा आया था मुझे एंड जब तक मैं निकला वो बोले कि हाँ हाँ तुमको ऑफर दे रहे हैं जब तक मैं एयरपोर्ट पहुंचा मैं बोला हाँ हाँ मैं ऑफर ले रहा हूँ सो वी वर ऑल वेरी वेरी एक्साइटेड काइंड ऑफ नाइस फ्लो की हाँ हाँ हो रहा है हाँ हाँ एकदम सब हाँ हो रहा है एकदम प्यार से बातें हो रही है फन हो रहा है बहुत अच्छा लग रहा था लाइक आई वॉज जस्ट super happy i think that's a good big green flag for uh, teams where you would like or you would love enjoying working like yeah. whatever be it like when you are treated nice and it's in a fun way you are talking about i want to solve the hardest problems and it still doesn't feel overwhelming i think that's a good place to be in it's a good yeah. green flag absolutely absolutely i think because of them i could trust ki yaar in log itna kuch in log ne kiya hai life mein ab is log agar is problem pe dhyan de rahe hain to definitely we'll figure something out and if i can just be a part of it that would be amazing right so i had a lot of trust on them um, but to like zoom out a bit yeah. like if you had not let's say started coding uh, started looking at those ai courses in qualcom yeah. and if you had not done i don't know some projects after that if you didn't uh, focus on uh, ai companies huh. you wouldn't have gotten into probably hyperverse or uh, so this is not like a one day or like a even a few months thing right you 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 did a journey over years yeah with somehow summed up and yes. you got there yeah. yes yeah i think it was i was just doing what i loved and i somehow found my way or they found me and just magic happened uh, but yes it was not like a one off thing i was also writing quite a lot back then uh, i used to actively right ai blogs mm-hmm. so i think that also helped people discover me because again not a lot of people were writing back then and uh, so some of the things that i had written also written also got shared widely uh, within the ai community and colleges so you started iitg.ai yes yeah what yeah. nice. is that yeah yeah so it's a it's an ai club in iit guwahati and uh, now it has become part of the gymkhana yeah. it's an official club as part of the gymkhana and i think that has everything to do with what others after me have done i have done zero to enable that uh, the only thing was ki when we were in my final year so me konark uh, from your batch right uh, and apurv uh, three of us we were dis- i think konark and i were discussing he had come to my room ki yaar ye kya hai hum log kuch share nahi karte hain ek dusre ke sath sab akele akele kar rahe hain kisi ko kuch pata nahi hai ki baki log kya kar rahe hain there is no campus and environment it's a robotics club ho gaya hmm. coding club ho gaya it's a great environment right kisi koi naya aata hai to they are already shown what you are what you can do there are seniors to guide you there are projects you can work on with them and learn कोडिंग के लिए भी सेम था देर आर इवेंट्स हैपनिंग ऑल द टाइम बट ए आई के लिए कुछ नहीं था देर आर फ्यू पीपल वर्किंग इन ए आई बट देर आर ऑल वर्किंग इन आइसोलेशन तो वी वर लाइक वॉट कैन वी डू राइट तो हमको लगा कुछ करते हैं चालू तो हमको लगा पहले कोर्स से ही चालू कर लेते हैं एंड अब वो लगा था कि यार सी एच टू थर्टी वन एन जिसमें करपाथी ने जो लिया था सो आई वॉज लाइक यार लेट्स टीच पीपल डीप लर्निंग because not a lot of people knew that so uh, and we were like dekho ye lecture hum log denge usse better hai ki tum karpati se hi sikho na matlab wo utna badhiya padha raha hai main usse kahan better padhane wala hu to but we were like obviously you need that kind of a environment where you can also ask questions that he is obviously not going to answer now so we were like acha kuch ek auditorium book karte hain wahan pe every week we will stream every lecture and you cup whenever you have doubts you pause like you ask us to pause and we will answer your doubts so that is how we started uh and uske baad we shared ki we are starting this there was a lot of support from other ai communities across other colleges so iit roorkee ka ek ai community hai uh un ko wahan se logon ne reach out kiya ki ha hum to karte hi aaye hain and they added us to their slack group and uh, so they shared their knowledge iit kanpur ka bhi ek group hai they shared their knowledge so it was really help- nice to see ki you know everyone is sharing their ideas and what they have done what worked for them some of the open source community has been uh, always helpful in ai machine learning Yeah, I mean, it it just fuels up. 
yeah it's so you do start something small and the, all the community comes in it's it's very nice thing with uh, this field yeah it felt really magical that you know people are coming together they are helping you without any motive of their own right and uh, so that gave us more fuel ki we'll keep doing this now and we had chopped up some plans ki ye ye karenge obviously us samay to kuch zyada kar nahi paye we were like karenge future mein fir then konark and apur they took on the banton they moved it forward they got the other set of people and for the first 2 3 years i was involved in hiring the next shakis mm-hmm. uh, and each one That came, they I think took it forward even more. अभी तो हमारा website वगैरह है, अभी तो courses कर रहे हैं हम लोग summer vacation में. Yeah, there are like onboarding uh, sessions for the new people. They are shown what our projects are there. So it's become really good now. We had this idea that someone shared with me. Uh, he was the founder of I think IIT Kanpur का machine learning group. Uh, he his name is Vivek. So he had shared with me that we should do this thing called machine learning research day. जहाँ पे यू हैव लाइक वन और टू डेज डेडिकेटेड टू मशीन लर्निंग लाइक अ मिनी कॉन्फ्रेंस राइट वेर एवरी वन ऑफ द कंपनी इज कमिंग एंड प्रेजेंटिंग वट दे आर वर्किंग ऑन एंड देर माइट बी लाइक आउटसाइडर स्पीकर सेशन अदर पीपल कैन लर्न कॉन्फ्रेंस फॉर्मेट करेक्ट करेक्ट एंड वी ट्राई डेट फॉर अ कपल ऑफ इयर्स फॉर टू आई बट आई थिंक इट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इट डिड हैपन 2022 or 2023 it happened for the first time and i was so happy right i didn't even know it's a plan ho raha hai ye ho raha hai but it happened uh, so yeah i i it, i always feel very happy about whatever thoda sa jo maine bas chalu kiya and fir baki log ne usko leke ekdam mast bana diya but i feel happy ki maybe if not me someone else would have taken the initiative i'm sure hmm. so i think ye jo aap initiatives liye ja rahe ho you know like you have not waited for someone to hand it over to you like yeah. you have kept on taking like new initiatives to build something new try and explore i think that has that helps people while hiring you right like they are a bit confident that i give him a problem and he'll find some way to you know solve it do you think that that kind of attitude you experience yeah yeah and especially uh, once people work have worked with me and then they, they do reference checks to then they hear things ki ha matlab abhi kya le lo aur kya matlab to sare time i'm just saying what is true i don't want to like zabardasti ka jo hota hai na zabardasti ka modesty nahi dikhana hai uh, mm-hmm. hey this is true i do take initiatives and that has helped me a lot definitely it's an attitude thing i guess and a lot of people whoever has this attitude luck ends up working for them is what i believe and because i had a lot of awareness ki i am not intelligent i have i am not intelligent like i have seen intelligent people for them they just figure things out aise aise fata fat mere ko nahi aata hai wo chamakta nahi hai mujhe wo but i can work hard That is something in my control. Intelligence तो मिला है जो मिला है, but working hard is in my control. Um, and so I was like, I will work the fuck out. तो इस पे कोई मेरे को beat नहीं कर पाएगा, at least. Do, uh, do you think this is a persistent uh, or a consistent characteristic of all of our uh, colleagues or batchmates or something? I mean, at least who have been in the college. because i i seen this a lot not a lot of them are intelligent but at least th- those who are doing good they they have the same attitude ki i'll beat them with hard work ha <laughs> so is that uh, is that the selection process or is that the journey in the college itself like what is it what whatever it's just a mm-hmm. uh take the question to both of you i guess i think there is going to be like a mix in the college like in the college in a college setting i think we'll get both of them but proportionally he it's very unlikely that majority of the people have that god gifted intelligence mm-hmm. right so in the population itself those people would be rare so i think who ends up, and there are people obviously who have been given that gift but if they don't they still need to work at some threshold level right maybe unko hamare jitna nahi karna pad raha hai but kuch to effort dalna hi padega so if they don't put in that base level of effort then they will probably not come mm-hmm. right yeah. so even with that god gifted intelligence they need some amount of effort uh, versus for us with that small amount of intelligence we need a lot more effort Uh, so and in my personal experience i think intelligence compounds over time matlab maybe you are not that much uh, in the beginning but then 
you do one project like your first project when you did that app in two days right that gave you confidence the next time uh, when you do something i think the zero to one is not there anymore like you have done one hard project and now next time it's about that specific thing it's no longer you don't question yourself i think so i think 99 percent people are don't have that god gifted intelligence and hard work is what differentiates them but like compared to you my personal hard work journey is a little different you know like uh, you for example when you went to qualcomm you were like ye nahi karna right but mera aisa tha tum mujhe kuch bhi karne de do i will work very hard on it but i did not know what to do so whatever i got in right i just did it hard and even right now i would say okay yeah i have some uh, preferences right now but let's say i get into a shitty job by mistake i will not uh, go back on my commitment you know i came in i'm going to give you my one year because you had me or something like that and then i'm going to i'll give it my best you know whatever i can learn out of this uh, i'll do and uh, if i can do ai on the side i will do ai as well so that's what i did in my last job um, it ended up helping me a lot but it's a different way of expressing activating that hard work i i felt yeah and it makes sense right like there's no one road to becoming better or to achieving your potential i think maybe it's a personality thing where uh, maybe the outcome of what you are working on is not that important maybe uh, is not that big of a factor for you to do it as long as you are learning because see whatever we work on if it's new we will learn right um and that's a very good attitude to 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 have um and i was wishing ki sometimes i would wish ki maybe i have some of that and i am inculcating that now right ki where uh, there are things obviously that i will not like uh, i still have to do so uh, i think thoda sa it's a push pull like meko to samajh aaya hai ki bar bar in every field no the answer comes down to balance in everything it is coming down to that only you take personal life work professional life from what i understand everything is coming down to balance like agar kisi me agar mere me um bahut jyada aisa hai ki outcome matters a lot and if something i don't like i am not able to work on it then that something i need to work on ki mai kar pau wo bhi like as long as it's not like 100% of the job that i am hating if it's like 20% that i don't like i should still find a way to do it versus i think ki there should there are benefits to having this attachment to what you are working towards as well like caring about what you are working towards has its own benefits right you will where you might push a little harder uh, you might do things that maybe are not your job right maybe you have to talk to someone and you are like ये तो मेरा काम नहीं है ये मेरे को मेरे पर्सनल ग्रोथ में नहीं हेल्प कर रहा है बट बिकॉज यू केयर अबाउट दैट प्रॉब्लम यू विल डू इट एनी वेज राइट सो आई थिंक देर इज अ हेल्दी मिक्स ऑफ बोथ केयरिंग अबाउट वॉट यू आर वर्किंग ऑन एंड दैट ड्राइविंग यू वाइल ऑल्सो बींग एबल टू डू थिंग्स दैट यू माइट नॉट फाइंड एक्साइटिंग और इंटरेस्टिंग बट पुशिंग योर सेल्फ टू डू इट बिकॉज इट्स स्टिल इम्पॉर्टेंट सो आई थिंक कमिंग बैक टू योर इंटर्न इज डन वाधवानी ये ये जॉइंट तो वाधवानी के पहले लेकिन देन आई वाज सेट हाइपर वर्च तो इंटरव्यू हुआ इंटरव्यू होते ही आई हैड एक्सेप्टेड वाधवानी एंड आई फ्लू टू हाइपर वर्च एंड दोस टू मंथ्स दे वर द बेस्ट इंटर्नशिप आई हैव एवर हैड इट वाज द टीम हैज ग्रोन टू अराउंड 200 पीपल नाउ बट दे वर वेरी स्मॉल लाइक 15 और सो पीपल व्हाट डज इट डू व्हाट डिड इट डू एट दैट टाइम या सो हाइपर वर्ज हैज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग जर्नी बट आई विल फोकस ऑन अ वेरी स्मॉल पार्ट ऑफ इट दैट आफ्टर अ लॉट ऑफ पिवट्स आफ्टर अ कपल ऑफ पिवट्स वी हैड landed on this saas business model uh, that we want to build software for other companies right and uh, uh, the team there was very good in computer vision so they wanted to solve they wanted to start with solving computer vision based problems and identity verification like we all know kyc yeah. and all has become a huge deal now at that time itself uh, since then we have been working and even before that right so uh, hyperverge was providing like 
and continues to provide like identity verification services and there are many different identity verification services like KYC is one there is video KYC as well yeah. we had a lot of clients in uh, Philippines and Vietnam and there uh, people also have face based authentication right so sometimes yeah. what would happen is uh, there is a problem called liveness detection yes. where uh, someone maybe instead of your actual face just puts a passport like just puts a photo of you Right, so you should be able to detect if it's a photo of you or is it an actual person. So it's called liveness detection. I got to know about the problem for the first time there. So there are many such problems in the identity verification space. But at that time, they also had another uh, vertical called geospatial, um, and I was interested in working on climate change. So uh, thankfully, मतलब there was some so. Geospatial data is very important in the climate change space. Mm -hmm. So I felt okay, like it will be great. I'll get some nice experience uh, working on geospatial data. And the problem I was working on was called change detection. Essentially, given uh, two photographs of the same place, uh, but spanning two different uh, times. I mean, say uh, this is. In 2022, this is exactly one year later, right? You have to detect what has changed. Okay. Uh, so the use case for this mm -hmm. was, uh, I think, detecting terrorist camps. Uh, oh, nice. So did you see something interesting? <laughs> <laughs> But essentially, the interesting thing was also that you don't want to capture every change. Like suppose uh, trees thaw. Right? अब यहाँ trees cut गया, या tree grow हो गया. That is not a change that is meaningful to the client. Hmm. So we want to capture only certain changes. Um, was it for defense or some uh, like was it a defense project? Uh, I don't know if I can say. Oh, that's huh. fine. Right. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, so this was the entire project. So there, not only did my learning was. Oh, okay. I actually forgot. In this case, there was one more internship, which was after my seventh semester. So after I got placed, I still did another internship uh, before my eighth semester. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how many internships and how many startups in total you did in college? Probably a number would help. No. <laughs>